Hello everyone, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing and today we're going to learn a new product together. I purchased the EK Tools scoreboard and I wanted to walk you through it and show it to you. It's EK Tools, their standard scoring board. This is the large one. There is a smaller size. Um, I don't know if I wanted the smaller size, but I think I like this one. I just left it somewhat packaged so you could see how it comes. I paid $19.93 for it at a craft warehouse. You could get it for a similar price online. Probably a little bit cheaper, but I wasn't very patient. I had purchased the We Are Memory Keepers trim and scoreboard somewhere else in town, and I did not like it. They were kind enough to take it back. Real quick about the other product, it's a very light gray and kind of a teal color and it's made by We Are Memory Keepers and it's trim and scoreboard. It's about the same price, so it's a great value for a cutter and a scoring tool, which this one is just scoring, no cutters. I have cutters I like, I didn't need a cutter, and that one folds in half, so right around the six inch mark, it had a little problem lining up. It did make nice cuts, it did make nice scores, I just didn't like it. It just was not the product for me and I knew that I wasn't going to be happy with it. But if you just wanted a really economical intro product and you want to score and cut, I mean, it's probably a better value than this one, but uh, I'm very happy with this one. So I just wanted to tell you about those, the two products. And then I also want to tell you, I did not need a scoreboard, okay? You do not need one in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I didn't have even a simple bone folder, and I'd been looking at, like, getting a Teflon bone folder. I don't have an envelope template. Years ago, I did. I also don't have any scoring board or scoring tool of any kind. So I thought, well, if I'm going to get something, I might as well get a multi-purpose tool. That's what I look for a lot is... Not necessarily, which is why some of you might like the We Are Memory Keepers trim and scoreboard. I don't want a tool that just does one thing and then sits aside, which is why I don't have that envelope template anymore. I don't think I would be the kind of person that would buy an envelope punch board, but who knows, maybe down the road I'm gonna see one and decide I have to have it. I'll use this to score my card bases, to score any, I could use the bone folder for anything I want creased, and for envelopes. It won't be as cute as the teal and gray one hanging on the wall in my craft room, though, I will tell you. And this has a slot right in the back here where you can pop it in and store it so you won't lose it. And let me go ahead and get you started. One thing I will say is in the directions, it said for an A2 card to cut the paper 7 and 5 8 inches, and then it gave the scoring instructions. It made beautiful envelopes. Okay, with a seven and five eighths piece of paper, beautiful. They did not fit my A2 card. I'm not sure what the plan was there. So I went online and looked around a little bit and I saw that others were using eight inch squares. If you're doing shaker cards or you really want uh, lots of room in your envelope, you would wanna go to eight and a half. Eight and a quarter would be somewhere in the middle. This card has several layers of cardstock and foam mount, and it works fine in an eight inch. So I went with eight inches. There are also paper pads. You might be able to find a paper pad in eight inch or some kind of pack, which would be handy and there wouldn't be any waste or trimming if you wanted to make a whole bunch of fun envelopes. That's part of why I went with eight because I just wanted to try it out. I have here a printed paper. This is made by Doodlebug Designs. This is a very old one, so you'd have to get a newer one. And this is copy paper. I'm not sure why I have printer paper. I don't have a printer, but it's handy for today. The thinner, if your paper is too thin or too thick, it's gonna be hard for beginners. But once you get used to doing this, you can use whatever paper you want. I have a roll of paper that's like to cover your floors when you get hardwood floors done. I could even use that. It's craft colored, it's crazy thick, but whatever you have and you wanna use. To get started, I'm gonna, we'll do these after. First, I'll show you with printed. And I started this one. Uh, and I did have a little oops there, but don't worry about it. I wrote the measurements on things because remember you can always pause your video. So you could pause it and see those. If you wanted to go back and you didn't want to listen to me again, that's fine. 
I don't care. I won't take it personally. So you just pop this out and this is called uh, a bone folder or a folding tool. And the trick when you're scoring, some of the tools have a round ball on the end and that one you can use pretty much at any angle. Something like this, you need to be careful that you come in at a low angle because if you use this point, you're gonna poke through most of your papers, especially a thinner one like this. I have an eight inch square and then in my directions, and there are different directions and different options online, it says to score at two and three quarters on each side and then three and a half the other way. It says to rotate it 90 degrees as you go around. What happens is if you're talking or watching TV, you're gonna mess that up. So I think it's better to do two and three quarters, two and three quarters straight across, and then we'll do the three and a halves right now and I'll show you. You hold this in place, it jiggles a little, so be sure you don't let your paper slide under it. And like I said, I'm gonna come in at a low angle and I'm just gonna gently pull it towards myself from the three and a half inch mark here. Okay, and I did punch through just a tiny bit right there, but we're gonna cut that off so we don't care. And again here at three and a half. Okay, and I know I've seen lots of people score with the right side up. I don't really know why. Like I said, today I'm a rookie. This is my first day having a scoreboard, so I'm not sure what, what the rationale is on that, and maybe I'll learn at some point. And we can talk about that another time. Okay, so I'm just cutting out the corners and you'll see there are uh, envelope punch boards and that's what they do is they score and then you use the punch to cut out the corner. I'm not sure what else you can do with those. And as you know, I like to have uh, versatile tools. So I don't know, maybe one of you will convince me I should have one of those. Okay, so I'm just cutting this out and I mean, you've seen envelopes before. You kind of have an idea of how they work. And you could unfold any envelope that you have around your house that somebody mailed you that you like and make a template out of it. Keep that in mind. So if you get one in the mail and you think, oh, it's adorable, take it apart, trace around it with a piece of cardstock or a cereal box, and you've got a beautiful template. So I'm just gonna fold this all up. There is a product you can buy that's like a lick and stick right here. So if you wanna give cards away and they're ready to go, you could also buy the double-sided adhesive with the peel-offs and just leave them on there. Um, whatever works for you. Typically for my printed envelopes, I don't make so many of them that I give tons of them away. I almost always mail them myself. So I just glue it down when I'm ready. Now, there are a couple things you can do to customize or polish this. And you see I have that extra crease where I uh, hit it, I scored it at the wrong place. I do not think that that's a deal breaker. I'll still use it. Okay, a couple things. You can cut out this triangle if it bothers you. Sometimes people do that. You can also make a layer to go in here. You know when you buy like designer greeting cards, they're layered here. I haven't experimented and sent a card to my friend to see if anyone actually notices that when they open them, but if I was giving it away as a gift, as an envelope and a card set, I certainly wouldn't have written on here or leave it like this, right? And that it says cut here for eight and a half by 11. I don't think they do that anymore. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this out. And you could do the same if it was bothering you. You could always cut it straight across too. There we go. And then I'm going to glue mine down with Herma Dots. These would stay just fine because the longer they sit, the tougher they get. I'm going to glue right along this edge. And it works fine on top of my funny surface here. There we go. And then we'll put our card in it. And you can see this card has quite a few layers, but it still goes in there just fine. Okay, and then we would fold it down and it would be adorable. Now, this paper is a little bit dark, right? So I would probably use uh, like a silver pen on it or a big label on the front, whatever you wanna do is fine. But it just gives you an idea to keep in mind the actual mailing of it and addressing it on the front. Super cute though, when you went to get your mail, you would know that that's not a bill. 
Okay, let me show you one other idea. And for this, I'm actually gonna put the scoreboard away, okay? Because I know that a lot of my uh, subscribers are new to the crafting world and they don't have a scoreboard and that's okay. The idea here is uh, use what you have. It's like racing cars, right? Run what you brown. Okay. This is hilarious. This is a super old Stampin' Up! pad. Don't try and buy one like this. You won't find them. I happen to have the re-inker and I used it. So it's good to go for today. This is just another 8 inch piece of paper. I hope. Let's see. Yeah. So an 8 inch square just like we used in the printed paper. And I'm going to take this stamp and I'm going to stamp all over it because I don't know. There we go. We'll pretend we want it that way. I don't know exactly how my envelope's going to come out. And if I wanted, I could color these in. I could use different stamp pads, whatever, right? So what I'm just showing you is this is printer paper and an ink pad that I'm pretty sure is like 15 years old. Um, a lot of my inks are pigment inks and stuff and I didn't want to work with um, the Distress Oxides. I wanted something that would dry really quick and this thing will dry fast. And just to keep it, make sure it's cute on the edges too. We'll be sure we have some going off the edge. Okay, very scientific. Okay, now we have an eight inch square piece of paper, okay? So we could use the scoreboard and put it back on there and do the same exact thing and cut out the corners and it would turn out just as cute as this one. The thing I really wanted to show you is I have an eight inch square piece of paper. You've made a card, you're sitting at home and you don't have envelopes because you're a new card maker. So this isn't for the uh, perfectionist people, but it works, okay? You just fold it, just like if you had a scoreboard. And this works pretty well too. If you had a card that you'd done a great big shaker on and you weren't sure and you didn't want to get all the way done, you could cut yourself an eight and a half piece of paper, eight and a half inch square, and then use it just to fold it up this way. And then you would know that it would fit. You wouldn't be all done and have to redo it. So then I'm gonna take this apart and I'm gonna trim out the corners just like I would. Now obviously they're not scored quite as well but the idea is the same. Don't drink a bunch of coffee before you do this. And those of you who watch my videos know that I don't love anything that involves detailed cutting with scissors, but I do love cute envelopes. trim this one a little more and you can trim these up at an angle too that makes them they're not going to show and it makes them a little easier to assemble so you don't have that bulk especially on a big card like this uh, this is not an easy card necessarily to make envelopes for that's why I chose it because it has some bulk okay so then we'll do the same thing and I should have trimmed that before I put the glue on it because now I have the Herma Dotto on the back of it. And you'll see this one, I'm cutting a rectangle out. That's the difference between not using the scoreboard, right? It didn't come out perfect, but look how cute it is. Okay, now you could take a Sharpie, don't leave your card in there, and address this and it would be gorgeous. The other thing you can do is you can apply stickers or washi tape right over that. You could wrap it around straight. I love things at angles. It's just, it's my, uh, I'm not gonna go where the stamp is because I don't, I don't know if that's a good idea. So it would be much easier to wrap it around the bottom or wrap it around the top, but 
There we go. And then I would seal my card in there. Now granted, this is not the envelope for this card, but you get the idea of the possibilities. And then I could put another line of washi tape right there of a different kind. I could color them in. I've also been known to, especially if I'm giving the card, not mailing it, I'll take a great big happy birthday stamp across the front of it and write happy birthday. So just have fun with it. Your envelopes, I typically don't spend as much uh, time or money on the envelopes, but they should still be fun. So have fun with them. I hope that great, gave you some great ideas and I'm sure you can find an eight inch square of paper in your house. So go to it and have fun. If you liked this video, be sure and give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you wanted to see a video about this card, you could watch my masculine card video. Okay, thanks for watching and be sure you're taking time for something fun.